they will do whatever the social convention is. They have prioritized comfort. And because they're prioritized comfort so much, it will feel uncomfortable to feel like a bad person or like they were on the wrong side of history. So What's good you guys and welcome back again on another episode. How are you all doing? I hope you guys are doing great. And if you're joining for the very first time as well, thank you so much for tuning in. And please don't make it your last time. So smash the subscribe button and turn your bell notification on. The world is literally collapsing. And over the past few weeks, the news from the media has been very heartbreaking. While so many people have used their platform to spread awareness about what is going on, we as well know that there are people calling out people who have been quiet and not saying anything about what is going on. With their excuses, what am I supposed to do if I talk? What do you think is going to change? Will anything happen? This issue going on, especially in Palestine, in Congo, has put a lot of people in deep thinking, coupled with the letter to America that made its way back to the media in the last few days. This creator has a very short message to people who have been quiet about what is literally going on in the world right now. I'm hoping that they are not going to come back in a few years to come and say some lies that they, you know, supported these people. Or this was what they did when the silent genocide was going on in Congo, when the Palestines was being bombed as well. So he has a very short message that I would like you guys to hear. It is very short, but as well very, very important too. So let me roll the clip of the video he made that people have been stitching to and as well, you know, dropping their two cents. One day you will lie to your grandkids about supporting the Palestinians, the same way your grandparents lied to you about supporting the civil rights movement. The only difference now is, now you have a digital footprint. Now we have a record of where you stood. One day you will lie to your grandkids about supporting the Palestinians. 1000% they're going to lie. They are absolutely going to lie. The tide is shifting right now. The social conventions around this will change. One day it won't be controversial to say that Palestinians deserve life, dignity, and freedom in their own land. And what happened in Gaza was a tragedy. It won't be. And because these are people who don't have moral courage, they will do whatever the social convention is. They have prioritized comfort. And because they're prioritized comfort so much, it will feel uncomfortable to feel like a bad person or like they were on the wrong side of history. So they'll lie. And not only will they lie, they will lie in creative ways that will surprise you. The people you see right now who don't want to hear anything from Palestinians or not interested in it at all, will one day quote Palestinian poets, authors, writers, and scholars to you. They might do it in an instance where they want you to shut up about something else or they're trying to prove to you that they are morally upright. But I guarantee you, they will lie in some of the most creative ways you have ever seen. There's going to be other injustice happening in the world that you and people with moral courage like you are going to get worked up about. And those people are going to quote Palestinians to you to get you to shut up. Mark my fucking words. And I'm not one of the astrology girlies, but it is Scorpio season. I am a Scorpio. My birthday is on Saturday. Um, what I'd love more than anything is freedom for all people living under oppression. Uh, and, you know, people say Scorpios, one of the things they have issues with is holding grudges. And I don't know that I necessarily believe in astrology, but I can see it's a helpful tool around reflection. And so I've heard that. I'm like, yeah, I am a person who's had issues with holding grudges. And learning to let stuff go and be a person who doesn't hold them anymore has been really freeing. But here's where I think a righteous grudge can come in useful. I have made it my life's mission to make art, to document people like that so that we don't forget. What's so clarifying to me in this mo these moments is that those are some of your biggest obstacles when it comes to uh, fighting for progress. And we need to know who they are. And so it is my responsibility to hold this grudge. It is, I really do feel that way. I will use every talent and skill at disposal for the rest of my life so that we do not forget where you stood. That's not to say people don't grow and change, that people can evolve. I have. I'm a testament to the, how much people can grow and change. 
but some of you will remain exactly the same and you will use the very voices that you are looking to silence now to provide cover for you and I just I'm just not going to let that happen. I pay for extra cloud storage for such a time as this. Okay? Happy Scorpio season. Free Palestine. One day you will lie to your grandkids about supporting the Palestinians. Ryan Ken has a really great video about this, but I couldn't stitch his. And he's talking about how it is Scorpio season and we are keeping receipts. And I am a Scorpio. My birthday was Friday. And I will definitely be keeping receipts because if you have been watching a genocide happening in real time and you have been silent in every part of your life, because I'm not saying social media is the only place you could be doing work, but if you've been silent every part of your life, like, I will make sure that we are documenting and that we will remember so that you do not come later and say that you have been in this with us because you have not been and lives have been lost in the masses. We are watching an entire generation, an entire people be wiped off the face of this planet and you were silent. Trust me, I'm dedicating an entire closet to the receipts. Lie to your grandkids about supporting the Palestinians. The same way your grandparents lost. They will and they won't. They will and they won't. The truth is, there is a vignette when it comes to the memory of the oppressor. And a lot of times, when it comes to people who actually speak out against the oppressor, the only thing that they can remember, the only thing that the oppressors can remember, are the times when the oppressor spoke about peace. I'll give you two examples. Bob Marley, Martin Luther King. Whenever you have a conversation about racism on the internet, the one person that racists will always bring out of their bag is Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King wouldn't have wanted this. Martin Luther King, what about his speech about equality and walking down the street and all of these things that actually aren't related to you asking for equity as a person of color. And they did the exact same thing with Bob Marley. There were plenty of times that Bob Marley spoke about how to defend yourself and it wasn't always with peaceful reggae he was out there bailing people out of prison and so it's a selective memory that they have when it comes to injustice and it's not that they will lie oh actually they will lie they will they will omit certain types of things but what will actually happen is they will quote the peaceful poetic parts of this situation to make it seem so easy to fix it's, it was just all about kind of everyone getting along it was just about you know both sides getting along you know you know this person said this thing and i feel like in society we just need to focus on this one speech it always happens because in order to do that they don't recognize the parts that they played during this occupation watch and see what happens one day you will lie to your grandkids about supporting the Palestinians. This so much of my thoughts have been consumed with the fact that we live in an age where social media is very ever present in our everyday lives, that our thoughts are um, promoted to be shared on a consistent basis, that a lot of the takes that people have come back to bite them in the butt very often because of our lack of knowledge of how um, these things work, you know, government, genocide, all of these things. And I think more interesting is that we aren't able to be lied to in the same way. And that's by our friends, by our family, about what it is they really truly believe about how they see human life and how they value human life. But also the government can't lie to us in the same way. I really imagine what civil rights, you know, World War II, um, Korea, all of these things would have looked like if we had access to those voices of those people who were experiencing that. One day you will lie to your grandkids about supporting the Palestinians. Not only are you going to lie to your children about supporting Palestine, you're going to feel a lifetime of remorse and guilt. Because that is the same thing that happened to former Nazi officers and soldiers who ended up unaliving themselves or falling into destructive habits such as alcoholism in order to cope with the amount of regret that they felt after they finally realized what their actions did to a whole generation of people. And a great example of this would be Arnold Schwarzenegger's father, who was a former Nazi for World War II. 
in this video that you can find on YouTube or you can read recaps of the video in a multitude of articles similar to this one, Arnold Schwarzenegger goes on to talk about how his father was played with a lifetime of guilt and anguish, which drove him to alcoholism and self-abuse due to the fact that he was finally able to see the amount of damage that he caused during his actions in World War II. And this is something that I predict is going to happen to a mass amount of people who are currently supporting Israel. What do you guys think about what they all said? I totally agree with what that guy said, that they are going to come and lie that they support Palestine. One of the cities said they are going to quote the peaceful part of this situation to make it seem so easy to fix. There was a particular lady's video that I came across yesterday that talked about where she said looking at how the media is dealing with the massive unaliving of brown people, let's think about what wasn't caught on camera during the civil rights movement. Just think about it like look at the biases that has been in the media report. Let's now think about some of the things that were not caught on camera during the civil rights movement. Imagine what will have been covered up during the civil rights movement, the people who were, you know, against the civil rights movement as well. Because if we go through history, if we go back to those times when all of those things happened, the only thing that we were seeing were black and white pictures. And these black and white pictures were, you know, presented to us in a way to make us feel like, oh, it's so dead long years ago. It's time you guys move past this. It's time you guys let it go. It happened a long time ago but it's all a lie it has really been a struggle in the world we live in today being black or brown and this lady said something that i totally agree with she said it's almost like the only ally we have is just technology because if not for technology how are you going to be able to see the videos of the kids that were being pulled out of the hole in congo so it almost like Technology is the only ally that black people have. It's really a sad one. What is not favorable to black brown people? And it's just so sad to see that even years after years after years after years, black people are still being subjected to this type of slavery, this type of exploitation, this type of colonization. It's just so very sad. I would like to hear what you guys think in the comment section. What do you think about the point that this guy made? Because I totally agree with what he said that, you know, Yes, to come, you will come and lie that you supported Palestine, but the media has made it so easy because there's something called the digital footprint. Like, it's something that has been happening over time where you see the celebrity going viral, and one of those horrible anti black tweets will just, you know, show up on the media because the media never forget so i totally agree with what this guy said they are definitely going to lie but trust the media to beat their ass to it i would like to hear your thoughts about what you said in the comment section and what do you think about the guy that said that they are going to quote the peaceful poetic past to let it seem like it's something that is so easy to fix let me hear your thoughts about that in the comment section thank you all so much for coming around and if you have not subscribed Please, what are you waiting for? It's so free. Smash the subscribe button and turn your bell notification on. And I am going to talk to you guys in the next one. Bye and I love you guys.